Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to Post Match, and it is now Post Match Raw because Dave can get in the bin. It's us winning the League Cup. It was the podcast for the final. We win on penalties in a mad nil-nil game, possibly the best nil-nil ever, where there was a million offside goals, controversy, made up refereeing by a mad referee, a mental penalty shootout. We're going to try and get through as much as possible. We're going to get as many reactions as possible from people who have joined in the pods all all, uh, all season. But I'm going to start with the usual scouted boys, the raw boys. Dave, how are you doing? You I'm finally good. graced us. You've graced did, us with a present. That's it. Only turn up when the silverware has been handed out. A bit like that, you know. Exactly. And Carl, how are you doing? We've just won a cup final, mate, at Wembley. How do you reckon I'm doing? <laughs> uh, I could be... I don't know, you could be having a bad day. It's It's got a lot better over the last... Um, there you go. Well, how, however long <laughs> it's been since the shootout finished. Uh, there we go. Right. Um, let's get the Thiago stuff out of the way before we get into your reactions to winning the cup, because that was the only downer now. And maybe Diaz, but I haven't taken out on him. Dave, uh, it, the day couldn't have started much worse. No, it couldn't, no. Um, somebody... I, I can't remember who, but somebody made a joke on Twitter about an hour before the game saying, imagine if Thiago got injured in the warm-up. And then he did get injured in the warm-up. And oh, no. look, there'd been some talk that he'd, he'd gotten hurt against Leeds, that he picked up something against Leeds, and that maybe he was a little bit of a doubt. So maybe he was just feeling that. I don't know. He seemed okay after the game. He was jumping around a bit and seemed fairly... Like he was moving fairly freely, so it might just be something small that they weren't willing to risk. It worked out, is all we can say. It worked out. Nabi came in, he started fairly quietly, but he did grow into the game. And I thought when we were on top, Nabi was good. So that part of it worked out. It obviously changed the, uh, the day of Harvey Elliott as well, who wasn't meant to be in the squad and then had to step up and take a big penalty. So... You know, these are these are the things that happen, and thankfully it all worked out for us today. And and we have uh, we have two men to thank largely for that. One is a big Irish goalkeeper, and one is a small Spanish goalkeeper. What a great sub that was! Right, that's the bad news. Dave, reactions to us winning the cup. I mean, it's the League Cup. It's would it determine how good the season is? Maybe not, but silverware is silverware, and I think you've said we want Klopp's legacy to be all the cups. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when when City fans try and boost Pep or people talk about Mourinho's legacy, a big part of their legacies are domestic cups and what they've been able to do. When we talk about Bob Paisley and what he did at Liverpool, a big part of that was domestic cups as well. Ferguson always put an emphasis on them. And especially this one, because you're winning this in February. And it's giving you that big lift, that big bit of momentum to head into the final three months or three and a half months of the season, whatever it is. Three months, I think. And, you know, it's going to be a bit of a grind from here on out because there's games every single, you know, two games a week every single week. And having just won that silverware, having that in the bank already should give these players a little bit of extra confidence to move forward. And the thing is, like, if we win the FA Cup now and that's all we win and we finish second and win the two two domestic cups, for me, that's a good season. For me, that is an acceptable season for us. With this team, to win two cups would be acceptable. So to have the first one ticked off is great. I thought we played pretty well. Not everybody had good games, but overall, I thought we played pretty well. 
I thought we created some good chances. We obviously gave up some good chances. Um, I will never not hate the VAR for what he stole from us today after Mm -hmm. we witnessed the greatest moment in the history of Anfield in midweek. We almost witnessed the greatest moment in the history of Wembley, old and new, and it was stolen away from us on a questionable enough decision. But overall, it felt like a draw would have been the fair result over 90, the fair result over 120. You get yourself into the into the penalty shootout, and look, they brought on Kepa as a penalty expert, and all eleven of our players scored past him, and then he himself missed his penalty. And while Quivin didn't do a great job at stopping their penalties, that boy can hit a hell of a penalty, and all of our lads took great penalties. Ebus is the only one you'd say maybe wasn't perfect. But you go up and down the line, and every one of them from Milner's on through to Kelleher's were brilliant. Special mention for Fabinho, for the Panenka, and Virgil for taking a look at Kepa standing about one metre from his right-hand post, left side as Virgil looked at it and thinking, I don't care where he's standing, that's where I'm putting the ball, and just leathering it past him. Just immense. He was immense all day. And I thought he, Fabinho, Luis Diaz, Cuevin Kelleher and Andy Robertson in particular were all excellent. Kelleher made some great saves. The save he made from Pulisic has been overlooked because of the save that Mendy made from Mane. But go and look at that save again. Like That's not just one where he gets a bit lucky and the ball hits him. That's a purposeful move of his arm to save that ball. It's a phenomenal save. He made another good save from Lukaku. I thought his kicking was good. He he was commanding of his box. I I thought he played really, really well. And I know we were all a little bit worried about not having Ali there, but Kelleher was brilliant today. Absolutely brilliant. As I said to Steve P before we went live, the greatest display by an Irish goalkeeper since Packy Bonner in Genoa in 1990. Shea giving your entire careers in the bin. And uh, it's just a great day for Ireland. It's a great day for Ireland as we and we alone conquer Russia. Yeah, I'll I'll let you have that one. I'll let you have that one, Carl. We've won the cup. Well, we won't start with a penalty shootout. But which was your favourite penalty? Uh, for being your for me, because that's when Kepa was being peak bell end, and it was lovely. <laughs> Well, I think Kepo was being peak bellend in the final about three years ago under Sari, to be honest. So well, that's today true, was yeah. Justice yeah. delayed for all of that. Yeah. Uh, I think my favourite penalty was probably Van Dyke's as well, actually, because he ha- he did have about like three square centimetres and he just said, I don't care, that's where it's going. So that would be mine. But, you know, Fabinho's was pretty class. Milner got the whole thing rolling. I must admit, I was pretty nervous for Harvey Elliott's. I don't know if just because, you know, he. Yeah. Yeah, Alanga well, for missed reasons. the other week. Yeah, Alanga yeah, missed the other week, and I was like, "Oh yeah. God, no!" But uh, no, they were all absolutely brilliant. I mean, for 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 not even one to be, well, none of them were off target. Obviously, none of them were really savable until the last couple. I would say um, it was it was very very impressive to watch all round. I did particularly like the big puff of the cheeks of Andy Robbo. It was like the first thing that I've ever, ever seen him nervous for before he took the penalty. And then a big, although he probably won't thank me for mentioning it because of the, you know, Scotland-England thing. It was very, very Stuart Pearce of him afterwards, wasn't it? Mm. Oh, dear. It was. Oh, it was indeed. It was. It Can was. we just take a moment as well to admire Harvey Elliott for walking himself into a disagreement between Trent and Havertz and causing all manner of stuff to kick off by shoving Kai Havertz and then turning around and telling Rudiger to fuck off after Rudiger pushed him. <laughs> like, I know people were upset with it, but I love that. I love that he, he gets in, he wants to protect his teammates, he wants to be in the mix. He's not afraid to stand up. And like you said, you know, with that penalty, a lot of times you get a young player like Alanga, or even go back to the Euros with, with Bikayo Saka and Jaden Sancho missing those penalties in the final. Um, for Harvey to step up like that was just outstanding and it's it's a brilliant penalty as well so that boy's confidence will be on a high especially considering like i said he wasn't even meant to be in the match day squad mm. like when when tiago gets injured harvey's standing around probably a little annoyed 
that he's not in the match day squad and all of a sudden he's on the bench. Then on 75, he's coming on to replace his captain. And then, you know, an hour and a half later, he's taking a penalty. I'd also say that after he did cause all the uh, the ructions there in the corner, Milner trots across and is like, you know, a, a dad who's a bit fed up with his kid playing up, and he just pushes him out of the way. Go on, get up there, get upstairs to your bed now. Go on. The best and then, part and then, 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 then tells Rudiger to fuck off as well. And then yes. turned around and stabbed on Rudiger himself. <laughs> <laughs> Rudiger ran like fifty yards to get told fuck off by a teenager and an old man. <laughs> uh, uh, if there was one Chelsea player I, I really wanted to miss, I wanted all of them to miss, obviously, but the one you'd really want to miss, if not Kepa, was Rudiger, because he really does think he's he's God's gift to everything, and he's just a shit house. Like he is just a big awkward shit house. So you know he. I'm always partial to a dodgy or miss as well. Yeah, yeah, they're always good when he does his little hop, skip, and a and a flop. Um. But yeah, I'm going to leave you there and uh, let you all have a chat and enjoy the rest of your evenings. Up Queeving Kelleher, up the Reds. Carabao Cup, lads. It's been, a, it's been a decade. It's been a decade since one of them. We'll take that nicely. The first of four. Lovely stuff. Cheers, Dave. We, you will be back uh, tomorrow with Two Footed and stuff like that. Um, yeah, anyone else wants to jump in with me and Carl, just whack us a message and we'll try and get through as many people as possible whilst also keeping it somewhat of a podcast. But do message me in the uh, live show chat if you want to hop on. Uh, you can guest for as long as you want, but we'll try and get through as many people as possible. But Carl, the game starts. We've had the uh, questionable thing with the uh, Thiago injury. First five minutes, we're a bit all over the place and Kelleher makes a good serve. Yeah, it was nice to see that uh, someone came out ready for actual action and it was the most laid back of all. So we uh, seem to have this thing of late where we, we do start a bit slow and we do start sort of taking a little while to get into our game. And it's like we let the other team burn off a little bit of energy first and then we'll just start recycling it and letting them uh, run around chasing shadows and stuff. So it's kind of been that way for a little while. I'm too worried about it, especially because when you, you factor in, you know, the occasion and probably the adrenaline in the players and the fact that Wembley is a bigger pitch and all the rest of it. Uh not not the worst approach, but it could have been costly quite early on. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, at least it didn't mean anything. But we have Stephen with us who has been with me most of these games in the uh, in both cup competitions. How are you doing, Stephen? Pretty fucking fantastic. I mean, that took me back to nineties winning the you know, the old Carling Cup while listening on Five Live. It was awesome. Five Live, lovely stuff. That is uh, 2022 listening for you there. Who did you have on? Because we had um, Gary Neville and Stephen, what's, what's, what's his name? Martin Tyler. I'm going to call him Stephen Tyler. That's uh, Aerosmith. Who did you have on Five Live? Because that's almost a blessing. You know, between trying to listen to the match and tell my kids off, I wasn't, like, I can't <laughs> wasn't aware. <laughs> It was, no way. it was better though. I mean, we've we've won the cup, Stephen. Me and you deserve a medal, and so does Dave Horrocks, who hopefully comes on when if he gets a chance. But uh, we will get our medals in the post, I presume. As long as you're wearing your white suit, like you promised on the last pod. I do not own a white suit, but I can arrange that. F was that an FA Cup final? Or was it League Cup? I'm too young. You have to help me. It was but the I, FA Cup final. It was the FA Cup. So if we get to the FA Cup final, I'll get a white suit ready for it. Dave, we're getting white suits. Me, you, and Stephen. Um, right. Stephen, I mean, we got to go to the penalty shootout because the rest of it was too stressful. You, you've seen the penalty shootout. Pick a favourite penalty for me. Divvy. Divvy? Oh. It just, he just he kind of like walked up looking like he didn't give a monkey's about taking a penalty and just smashed it in and just walked off like he'd done nothing. I absolutely love how crappy he is at football, but how he loves to score goals in important games. He is great. Like, I don't think he touched the ball when he got subbed on mind, um, which is it's fine with me as long as he's scoring his penalty. But yeah, Stephen, you're, well, it's been a, it's an eventful day. Obviously, you were almost a guest on this, but you've been busy. I'm not sure how long you've got, but at Thiago getting injured in the warm up, Naby coming in, we look at a bit, a bit dodgy for the first twenty minutes, and then we start playing really well. It was a really strange game of football. 
Yeah, I mean, it was a bit, as you said, sort of tentative in the first 20 minutes, but I think once sort of, once, once, is it Lucho, Dave wants us to call him, but once Diaz woke up, he, um, he just looked really, really exciting and he just kept, it was almost like one more touch or one more pass. He just kept looking like he was going to do something. He was so, so close to like <laughs> being a player in the first half that turned things around. It's so exciting to see him because he's been at the club for not very long and he looks brilliant. So mm. like that was the highlight for the first half, which I actually did see before the internet mm-hmm. and Ken, Ken turned off for, for an hour. So yeah. I, I, uh, I enjoyed that. But I also just enjoyed watching like Kelleher. He just looked calm, composed. He looked like he should be playing. He looked really happy to be there. And I know Chelsea had chances, but it, I just, at no point in the first half did I feel like they were actually going to score. I was just sat about trying, semi enjoying it, trying to, you know, get my two year old to cheer on. He was shouting goal every time. I mean, he does this every match. He shouts goal every time Salah gets the ball. It's it's brilliant. It's not right to be fair. <laughs> but the, I, I didn't mind the first half. It was to and fro. But as I said, I, I just didn't feel like they were going to score. I just think Van Dyke was so good. Matic was so good. Kelleher was so good. It all felt fine. And then the second half was terrifying because I couldn't see what was happening. <laughs> That's probably almost worse, to be fair. Um, Kieran, do you fancy jumping in? Or you just said in the in the chat. Yeah, why not? They. Eh? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm not too bad. Favorite moments from the game? Uh, well, uh, for 120 minutes there wasn't very much. I thought uh, both sides had uh, chances. I could have went either way, um, and then. The referee just decided to fuck us over with the match at the moment, but luckily it didn't prove too costly and we went on and we scored some absolutely belter penalties and Kepa decided to do his best Shirley Adam impression. <laughs> Them two wheat in orbit soon, I imagine. It was fantastic. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, it is really good. I mean, obviously you're Irish. I mean, Kelleher, I know he's not first choice for the national team, but... no. He's a re- like from a player I had no expectations of a couple of years ago because he did look like a toddler. He yeah. looks like a really good goalkeeper now, and he's good. Yeah, at he's, <laughs> yeah. Over over the last two years, I think he's developed. Um, he's very uh, very composed and very confident, and you know, hopefully, we, hopefully he'd be willing to stick around to be number two because there, because if he keeps playing the guard, he'll. There'll be clubs looking at him to be their first choice goalie because I think he's superb. Yeah, he could start for many teams. He he just looks so composed for his age, doesn't he? I know, I don't mean that in a condescending way. Goalkeepers typically didn't used to be brilliant until they were almost thirty, and he's he just looks like an absolutely cracking player. And you could see how happy like Adrian was for him at the end of the match, and you could see how chuffed Allison was for him. Like it just such such a good keeper and. Hopefully he gets to play in an FA Cup final. Hopefully Klopp lets him play all the domestic cup games to keep him happy and wanting to be number two and wanting to keep learning from Big Alan. I hope his ambitions are to eventually get Ali's shirt. You know, I want him to stick around. It's just exciting watching him sort of grow at the club, isn't it? Yeah, well, we'll see him midweek as well, the, the FA Cup, won't we? So... He obviously gets. You know what I do for that game? I play. Hmm. I would just. I mean, I think we'll probably play a few kids for that game. To be honest, mm. that's what I think will happen. Which wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to jinx it because I'll have to do a podcast afterwards. But it is Norwich. <laughs> we have beat them already. Yeah. Was it two times, three times this season already? So mm. yeah, it'll definitely be a weakened team, I think. But oh yeah, but there will be. Yeah, but <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it'll be enough anyway. <laughs> yeah, should be, should be. Um, Carl, shall we get back into the game? If you're still here, I yes. am, and why not? He is right. So, midfield took twenty minutes to wake up. We don't really need to go deep on that because, well, we changed the midfield just before the game. Um, but our first chance is is the Mane header, and Trent did a lovely cross. Like it may be the only thing he did, um, except a fantastic penalty. But um, yeah. It was like a warning sign to Chelsea, I think, because that seemed to wake us up afterwards. 
But you know what? We we spent an awful lot of time in this game before and after this point that we're talking about now, um, swinging over that kind of cross and crossfield ball and clipped ball and lofted pass and all the rest of it over towards Salah, the diagonal from left to right. And um, pretty much every single one of them was pointless because Rudiger habitually gets Salah in his pocket, to be perfectly honest. He's very, very aggressive. He gets out really, really quickly. And Alonso is the only 17-foot tall wingback in the Premier League. So most of those were completely wasted. But when we did it the other way, and when it was Diaz running in behind Chalaba, or when it was Mane running across either one of the other two centre-backs, it pretty much worked every time. There was not always a chance at the end of it, but it was a, a, a ability to chest it down or play off the runners coming in from deeper. And that ball was pretty much spot on, like you say. Um, could have done probably with a runner from either Salah or one of the midfielders getting into the box as a maybe looking to get on the end of a save. Obviously, it went straight across the face of goal. Instead, he maybe got a little bit too far ahead of it, but the delivery in itself was really good. Uh, I, I would say that just before this point as well, the midfield really, really started to get on top of things. I thought Cater, after like a slow 10 mm-hmm. minutes or so, which you could probably excuse given that he was meant to be on the bench at that point, um, he absolutely bossed it like loads and loads of times. It was him on Kante. It was Diaz tracking back on Kante. Andy Robertson pretty much nailed down Aspilicueta every single time as well. I thought on that side, especially, we were really, really good in midfield uh, for quite a long time. And when we started to get that really big period of dominance around this time towards the end of the first half, it was mostly down to the midfield. It was mostly down to the eights and, and Fabinho in behind as well, not letting them get out. Um, really, really aggressive high up field, especially when it got to Chelsea having to play wing back and side centre backs very, very close to each other, just not giving them any out ball at all. I thought Keita was a, a big part of that, and uh, Diaz as well. And it's probably worth pointing out at this point that Diaz has a trophy to his name after 27 days, and it is uh, currently 9,773 days since Everton won their last one. That's fantastic. See, if he went to Everton. He, he, he might as well have just retired there and then. Um, so, yeah, he's a lucky escape, but he was fantastic today. I mean, Carl, you obviously, you and Dave were obviously quite excited because you would have seen more than uh, most of Diaz. I know Dave was especially excited, but to perform like that, and it's not just this game, he's been excellent every time he's played, really, but to play like that in a cup final against Chelsea, who are world champions and European champions, it's... It's a scary thought how good he be- he can become when he settles in and learns the language and stuff like that. Yeah, dead right. I mean, there's still a lot of things like the patterns of play that we have with the overlaps you see with Robbo. He's really good. It's, it's like being almost intuitive between the two of them. But then when he played that one game with Costas, for example, it was not quite the same. And there were a few uh, misunderstandings in the swap passes and all the rest of it. And that obviously comes from repetitions. That comes from knowing the patterns of play that we're going to have on and off the ball, when he's got to press, where he's got to come in field sometimes, where Mane plays a little bit wider and he tends to... Uh, sorry, Mane comes in field and he tends to stay a little bit wider at the moment, out of possession. So all these things will be you know, things that we would expect to improve on. There are very, very few players since that first Klopp full season who were signed and just come into the team. It's pretty much just Alisson and uh, Van Dijk who have done that and everyone else has had quite a slow integration and obviously part of this has been down to opportunity through injuries but he's really taken his uh, chances really really well making a massive impact on the team Uh, I said when we signed him I said quite a few times beforehand when it looked like he was going to be joining that it's a player who can go up another couple of levels his his real big increase in um, output productivity with Porto and how he's managed to affect game in the final third that has come in the period of about Two years, really. The difference between his uh, two appearances at the Copa America with Colombia between the last one and the most recent one is like ginormous. And that is only between the ages of like 22 to 24. So you think another couple of years with Klopp and uh, Lindis and a couple of the coaches, there's a lot more to come from him still. Absolutely. And we've got another guest joining us who's been uh, on quite a few of the shows with me on this cup run. Dave Horrocks, how are you doing, Dave? Not too bad, mate. I, which is a massive understatement. It's been a bit of a rocky road here, hasn't it? But uh, I'm like a an from losing with Arsenal against Arsenal wreck. Yeah, yeah. From going to the Arsenal game, then the the Leicester one, where you're like, yeah, I can take or leave this. Oh, the cheeky bastards! They put out their first team. You know, they're supposed to all have COVID. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant, mate. And I've got no analysis for you whatsoever. I just wanted to jump on and uh, enjoy a bit of pre-match. Well, just listen and chat shit and this fucking great day. I was there. Um, 
10 years ago when Charlie Adam hit that fucking ridiculous penalty and oh, Kepler God. just did his own little uh, uh, Tribute. recreation <laughs> of that. So, <laughs> no, fucking brilliant. Ah, oh, it's absolutely spot on. But as I said to Stephen, we are getting a medal, Dave, so it is partly on us. Yeah, of course. It, well, thing is, we almost have to carry on now, don't we, for like the FA Cup? We do. We do. I have to see if you're free for. I have to see if you're free for the Norwich game. Have you felt? But we'll figure that out afterwards. Um, but yeah, if we if we do the if we do the domestic double, it, it's on us. But it, it's squarely on us, not Klopp. We'll take it. Yeah, not we all the coaching and everything. Yeah, it, it's nothing to do with that. I mean, I, I just wanted to pick up on one of your earlier points. I think my favourite penalty was probably Robbo's. To be fair, because. Everyone else, I felt quite confident when they're walking up. And when he's sort of blowing out his cheeks, I'm like, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I shouldn't have been worried. He absolutely buried it. So I, I enjoyed it because I just I thought this might be it. Yeah, to be fair, I think everyone remembered, oh, shit, Robo can't shoot. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I've seen him. I mean, very, very rarely. You know, he'll, he'll score a goal, won't he? But most of the time when there's an opening shoot, you know it's going 10 yards over the bar. So, yeah. no, brilliant penalty. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lisa Marie, do you have the Discord permission? I know you wanted to jump on if you are in the chat. Is she here? She might not be here. We will return to Lisa Marie. Carl, we will get back into the game. I mean, you mentioned the midfield improved basically on to the Nabby shot. And basically, in my notes here, I've written, Mendy can fuck off, how's he save that? Carl Matchett, if you are on mute, unmute, please. He might. Does anyone want? Midwindy bugger enough. <laughs> he he you, was here. I, what was the question? And on my. Oh, I'm getting a really can bad. I, can you hear me? Oh, Is there it? we go. Right, I might have to edit this together. Lisa Marie, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Can you hear me? Well, I can hear you. Um, you can hear me. Yes. Fantastic. Fault Sorry. On, fault in the game. Well, this was my first final to watch in real time. So I was a wreck. Really? <laughs> yeah, because both the Champions League finals fell in the middle of my daughter's dance recital. So I'm like, you know, checking the scores. They're going on. So, um, yeah, so I, I guess I got my full, you know, money's worth for for it. Um you know, all the all the highs and the lows. So, yeah, I'm a wreck. Um, I've picked my cuticles until they've bled. And, yeah. So, yeah, but no, it was, I'm, I guess I'm just glad we won. After all of that, I just kept going, they've got to, they've got to win. They've got to win. If, if I'm living through all of this, they've got to win. So, um, I was completely confident in Kelleher from the start of the game. Till he went up to take his penalty. I, I just, you know, echo the thoughts that have already been said that he is so calm and so, I hate to say mature for his age, because that just sounds, um, I guess, just, I can't think of the word. I, I can't even put thoughts together. Um, but no, but I, <laughs> so no, but I was, um, at all, I will say when I saw that Tiago came up Injured and warm up, I was like, oh, crap. But I think it all went great. And, you know, I kind of feel that Harvey coming in when he wasn't even supposed to be on the bench was just a nice uh, to his the story of his season. And, um, you know, was happy that I was a little bit concerned about him taking that penalty. Just I don't know why I should have been because he is so um, confident that. You know, it really didn't really didn't bother me. But no, it was it was it was quite the ride. Um, I'm I'm glad I went to early mass so I could come home and watch it. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. But that, what was my first final? Mine was probably the League Cup when Gerard did the own goal. So 
Yeah, we've kind of had uh, different ones there, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, so but you I'm, might, I'm you might be the lucky charm. Yeah, you, yeah. You might be the lucky charm here. You might be. I don't uh, know about that. Don't put that kind of pressure <laughs> on me. But, but I'm just going to say one down, three to go. Oh, I like that. I like that. Hopefully so. If we do the quadruple, it's it's definitely it's definitely still on. Carl Matchett, are you back with us after your internet? I am. Ha- lovely stuff. Right, so before I asked, just before your internet crashed, I asked you about the Mendy save uh, on the Nabby shot and then the Mane rebound. And my note said, fuck off Mendy, how have you saved that? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, the same from, obviously, Keita was a, de- a decent save, but not uh, in terms of where he's put it back into a really, really bad area. It was really nice build-up play again from the Reds. And kind of thought that that one was going bottom corner, to be honest. I thought he was going to squeeze that one in, but man, I should score, let's be honest. Uh, yes, it's a tremendous second save, and he's done quite well to lift it, but from that distance, running in like that, you would obviously normally say that that has got to be a goal. Uh, probably on par with Pulisic very, very early on, so we've both had one massive occasion to score at that point where you would, I'd say, at least seven or eight times out of ten expect it to be uh, a goal. Um, fair play to Mendy for reacting as quickly as he did, but I think that's still a little bit more on Mane that he has to finish it than it is for Mendy having saved it. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. It's a, it's a really good say. I mean, where where do you stand on Mendy? Because he's a weird goalkeeper, isn't he? Because some people think he's the best in the league, whereas I think it's clearly Allison. But then there's a debate for who's second best and beyond. But he's he's clear he's like a different version of De Gea. He's really good at shot stopping, but I'm not sure what else he's good at. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think Allison's comfortably the best in the league, to be honest. I think he's a, a little bit of a way outside the argument, and then uh, it's a bunch of others. But I do think Mendy's exceptional. I I, I prefer the goalkeeper like Allison and like Cueve is like a baby version of, where he's far more about the positional play and the command of the area and being able to have a high starting line and all the rest of it. You saw, for example, really routine thing like Kelleher coming five yards outside of his area to head clear in the second half. I prefer that rather than someone who can make an unbelievable reflex save like we've seen Mendy do mm-hmm. quite a few times, right? Just because you're going to need one of them maybe three times a game, maybe five times a month, and the other one you're probably going to need once. That's it. Uh, so I, I think for the very, very top keepers, it's that style that you need, but it very much depends on the way that you play. Now, Chelsea, with their defensive line, which is a bit deeper, and with three centre-backs, they don't really need someone who is as good at sweeping up. They need someone who is capable of dealing with a few back passes and clearing the lines, being able to clip it out wide to the full-backs, because obviously they have, well, not the full-backs, but the wing-backs, uh, and an extra centre-back split a little bit wider as well, and someone who's tall and very good and deal able to deal with shots who are very very close range in because when they do create chances it's generally sorry when they do concede chances it's generally offset pieces which are going to be in and around his area or it's you know rebounds and stuff inside the box which are all going to be close range they don't rely on him having to sweep miles and miles outside of his area like we do or having to play out from the back so much like we do so he is a really good fit for them and in terms of shot stopping probably would put him in the top two or three in the league at the very least. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. It probably depends on the team, as you say, where you rank them. Um, Shall we talk about the ref and get that out of the way? How has he got a cup final? Uh, I assume something to do with the rotation of them. (laughs) It just doesn't make... like He's always regarded as one of the worst ones. Not sure how he got one, unless... Well, they're all pretty bad, I suppose, but he seems really... He seems to just make it up as he goes along. Uh, I mean, look, there was a a lot of comments from the commentary that I had anyway that uh, how good a game he was having and the only thing he'd got wrong was, you know, he missed a a foul by Keita, but I must have seen about... I think I got up to nine trillion before losing count of instants that he just didn't give, like, you know, Andy Robertson being NFL tackled over on the touchline. But no, play on, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And just small, stupid things like that. There was a tackle from Fabinho where he's just, I think, stopped the ball dead on Kovacic, I think it was. And we went to break away and he's given a free kick for that. There There was a few really stupid, bizarre things. But like you say, it's referee England pretty much means they're not going to be that good. Yeah, I have I have more complaints, but that is basically it. There's just none of them are that good, so might as well 
save our uh, complaints. If we lost, I would have brought it up more. But <laughs> um, we had a couple opportunities um, around that time. Kai Havertz seemed to be there. Main danger point is probably not the word, but he he played really well without being the main danger himself. He was linked. He obviously made mount a good few chances in the game. I, does week to week seems to be the struggle for him, but in the big games he seems to really turn up. Yeah, for sure. I thought I thought he'd done it again with that finish into the bottom corner later on. To be honest, um, mm. he's 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 not a he's not a really impactful player in terms of like you know the sprints in behind and taking on his man and all the rest of it. He's very much more about very very clever movement, really good link plays, first touch. You'll notice like when it goes to Lukaku or when it goes to Jota at the other end or anything like that. Half of the time, it'll be a good touch and a turn, and you'll make something. But the other half of the time, it bounces off the shin or their knee, or they go to control it and it hits the wrong boot or something like that. It never happens with Havertz. He's such a good player with his first touch. His body shape is always really good to protect the ball as well. And although he's not like lightning quick, he he, he is able to kind of like Fowler used to be. To be honest, with his first touch, he'll turn the ball the way that you cannot get to it at all. And he's very pretty much one footed as well. Just just with his uh, with his left and able to manipulate it very well. I mean, even the one, was it for Timo Werner shot in the second half? All he's yeah. done is literally stop the ball dead, but with the outside of his boots so that it doesn't actually spin, it doesn't bounce, it doesn't roll away the other side. He's, he's very, very good like that. I, I like how that's an awful lot. Yeah, it's, all, it's almost a shame he's at Chelsea. <laughs> it's not, he probably won't have the career he's meant to, but yeah, it's uh, he did play well. He did play well, and he seems to be their main man. Uh, we'll obviously come on to the impact Luke Harker and, and uh, Cole had. Um, I mean, before half-time, they have another huge chance. Uh, Mason Mount is a player, I'm sure many, many people, especially in the Discord, like, rate him. I know Chelsea fans rate him highly. He did not have his shooting boots on today. For which we can all be profoundly grateful. Thank you, Mason. Yeah, uh, he's not been in great form recently. I mean, we mentioned this pretty briefly on Scouted, but he, he had an injury and he's been in and out of the side uh, for, a, for a little bit of a while now. But I I think that if they weren't going to go with the three in midfield, he kind of had to play because he's the one who tends to drop deep and obviously works quite a lot harder off the ball and then can be that link player between the front two. I didn't actually think he did very much of the link play today. I may watch it back and see first half, especially if there was more that he did. But it seemed like he was... Uh, much more about getting on the end of things with his late runs into the box and everything. It was more about poor sick and how it's uh, making that, that link play and, and the, being the first out ball for sure. And yeah, I think we can just be grateful for the one, especially off the, uh, off the post. That was uh, probably their biggest chance overall, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Stephen is back from his fatherly duty. Stephen, we talking about the Mason Mount chances at either side of the either side of the um well, first for half time, uh, because it did go extra time. I mean, Mason Mount on another day he probably does score both of them. But yeah, a bit of sloppiness from Liverpool there, Stephen. If he's on mute. There Mason Mount obviously loves the boy band and he just got completely distracted by Big Kev's Irish boy band hair. You know, he just couldn't get a shot on target because he was just distracted by the beauty of the keeper every time. There can't be any other reason because he's too good a player. I quite like that. I like it. That's how Ali saves everything because he's a beautiful bastard as well. So there may, be, there may be theory there in the madness. If we sign beautiful goalkeepers, it puts people off. But yeah, um, but yeah, Steve, I, it, it's a weird one. I mean, your overall thoughts on the first half, because you actually got to see that half rather than listen to it. You got me again, Steve. There go. Sorry, me, me and myself. Um, apart from the mount chances, as I said before, I just, I just didn't feel like they were going to score. I know they had chances, but nothing felt... <laughs> Clear cut enough, to be honest. I thought they were more dangerous from what I could hear in the second half, and obviously an extra time. But um, there was one chance in the second half I momentarily saw before my internet died. Of I think it's Havertz shoots and Kelleher saves it with his left foot, and the Radio Five commentary makes it sound like it was 
and nothing save all they did was talk about Mendy, which was annoying. But yeah, first half, it was really fun to watch. It just didn't feel like they were going to score to me. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd almost agree, but maybe the mount chance because that was, I mean, hitting the post, I really should bury that. Uh, Carl, we'll move into the second half, and, and that second Mason Mount chance, a bit of, I think, uh, Nabby presses, I can't remember who presses, but the pass from whoever it was, and it deflects off him, and it just falls over Matip's head in between Trent, but Mount again should really score. He should, and Trent should also be at least with him, if not screaming at Joel that someone's mm-hmm. on his shoulder there. I mean, I know we play with the high line, and that's perfectly fine, but you still after that pass is made, you've got to make sure that you're tracking the runner, obviously. Once you've held the line and the pass has been made, there's nothing else to do with that line. You don't just keep holding it forevermore. Uh, so that was a, definitely a, a sluggish moment. I thought, again, we, we took maybe five, six minutes to even really get started after halftime. And it will cost us against good sides when they you know, obviously have a bit of a clinical edge. It was probably noticeable that None of Chelsea's forwards, obviously you'd normally think of Lukaku, but he's woefully out of form at the minute. But none of them are really killers in the box. You know, None of them who play today are absolutely deadly when they get a one-on-one or a really good finish. Like When Mo goes through, you, you expect him to score that one-on-one. But any of Chelsea's, you don't necessarily think so. They might do, because they're good players and you know good technicians and all the rest of it. But I don't think any of them are absolutely nailed on every single time, and probably that has been a big help today. Well, all right, Brendan, technicians. Oh, oh dear. dear. I'll, 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 I'll talk about character all right, in a bit. All right, all right, Brendan. <laughs> How, you doing, the, How you the doing, lad, The lad who tried to cost us the final. It was Jim. <laughs> Dude, oh, he wears the number 20. I can't sing anymore. I'm tired. And I sound so absolutely tired. buggered. Mate, I am absolutely shattered, but we just walked. How long? How far did we walk? About four kilometers? Four, four, four kilometers after watching the whole game, right? And we are absolutely shagged, but ecstatic, mate, after that. I mean, was it as exciting as, um, and, you know, heart wrenching, basically, as it was home, as it was in the stadium? Because it just felt like <laughs> it was hammer and tongs, man, until extra time where we just thought, we can't run anymore. We can't run anymore. Oh, we- we were fucked. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I was fucked. I'm quite worried people are going to be injured, but fuck that now for now. We can worry about that from tomorrow. But um, how good is Luis Diaz, by the way? Yeah. That is an amazing performance. What an amazing performance from him. But, um, mate, nothing better than um, beating the fucking Chavs. Nothing better, honestly. Absolutely. And that little bastard, Kepper, giving it large for every penalty and then doing that. Fucking hell. That is, that's got to be the most satisfying end to a final we've ever had. Fuck you, little shit. Sorry, I had to get that in. But it no, was no, no one like, no one likes Kepa. That's fair. <laughs> no one likes Kepa. <laughs> Chelsea don't like Kepa that much. I thought I'd uh, crash anyway, but I let uh, Brendan carry on now, Carl. Yeah, you can you can talk about character now, mate. No problem. Enjoy. <laughs> Insulting my before. guests. Gags was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It was just nice for um, the stick I was getting for being a jinx. It's just beautiful, just you beautiful injured, to you, get everyone you injured, back. You you got Tiago injured, so that's your fault. <laughs> no chance. I'm what blaming did I do? you. I went and you, two-footed him on the stick. He on distracted him. He must have slipped what or something. Happened? Does, have they announced anything about that? No, what, not really. Because they just said he. I don't know. They just said he pulled up or something. But yeah, he was crying. We saw that much, but. What a what a shock at the start! But I thought Naby did all right, you know. Yeah, thought he battled the way. Thought he did really yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. Right. How... Go on. I was going to say, how was the atmosphere? It was brilliant. We really enjoyed it until we started getting really nervous. Towards uh, extra time, it was nervy, man. They had some um, powerful subs come on. Although, to be honest, Werner, you kind of knew he was going to be shit. Uh, the whole Chelsea team's born offside. And uh, it was just lovely. That goal that got disallowed. Talk to me about that because obviously we haven't heard anything. Which one? <laughs> that ours, was. ours. Because <laughs> obviously we celebrated the whole goal, and then for it to be chalked off after that because everybody was going nuts, completely nuts. So why was it chalked off? He Van Dyke was off. Looked like he was a well, literally half a foot offside, and he. Yeah, but he wasn't. In. In, oh, okay. So he was interfering with play then. Yeah, he blocked James from marking Mane, basically, I think. 
What, that that must awesome. have happened. That must yeah, have happened really on, in every game. It was a nonsense call, mate. Absolute rubbish. There was no That's chance what? that James What's was going to get to the ball or going to get to Mane. No chance at all. I don't even know if he knew that Mane was there, to be honest. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it's it's impossible because literally we'd be having these calls given every every goal, literally in, in off set pieces. Because mm. always someone offside, but they're not interfering with play. It's fine. Yeah, F- what a what a joke. Five Live said it was a blocking foul on Rudiger, not offside. So they Sky, said they, Sky commentary said uh, it, was it was offside. No, 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 no. It, it was offside that they were checking for it. It, it wasn't a foul that they were looking yeah. at. Yeah. So what about all the Chelsea's? They were definitely offside. Yeah, they were the, all the Luke. The Luke Arku one was ah snippingly tight, but the others right. were quite clear. Okay, cool. That's, I'm happy then. Can't they can't moan? Fuck them. Exactly, exactly. Right. Well, it must have been go. something that we practice because Van Dyke did an interview after the game, and he said he did, he doesn't understand why they give it because they, it's a contact sport. Um, I don't make an effort to go for the ball. All I'm doing is standing there. Like yeah, that's because you can't move me. So yeah, exactly. clearly it's something they've worked on and have seen that it's a loophole how that they times, can use. How so many times have goals been given where they block keepers off? It's All a nonsense. Time. It's a nonsense. Complete, well, at least justice was done in the end. And, and Kepa was fucked. Has anyone ever seen a, a, a referee go check for an offside as well at the Mono? Yeah, it's that's stupid. First, that's it's first because first it's a foul. It's more, it's more the foul or, or the blocking, I suppose. But again, really stupid. The, the, at the end of the day, what what we have to ask, or there must be stats on Twitter somewhere, is this the first time that I, you know in in a final that a team scored all eleven penalties in a final? The first, come on, must be all of our eleven scored. Like it's just so amazing. <laughs> and well, the Villa, penalty was beautiful. Villa did against United. <laughs> oh, okay, so all eleven scored. I think it was eleven. Or was it? Villa it must have been. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. In England, well, in England yeah, is probably the domestic, first time. Domestic, yeah. Or an English team, even because which English team has yeah. been well, German we, on penalties? <laughs> didn't we? Haven't we done it twice when we played Borough as well? Guys, we no, not in a final, in it. No, no. But final. we've got to, we've got to get on the, tr- uh, the 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 tube now. So I'll catch you later. Thank you. Catch you later, lads. Bye. Bye. Today we're sneaking in there. How are you doing, today? Yeah, quietly listening in the background. Lovely stuff. How are you doing? What was your favourite moment? What was your favourite penalty? My favourite one was Origi because I'd, I, I'd been giving it the biggins on Twitter that he was coming on to save us. And if he missed that penalty, I was just going to go into hiding, pretty much. <laughs> you, you, are, you are king of his fan, bit, uh, fan club, to be fair. So, yeah, that, that, I think that'd be fair. That would be fair. Uh, yeah, Carl, I can't remember what we were up to. Um... What were we up to? Uh, about to sack me. Yes, that was about it, really. I think I was up to James coming on as injured, who should have been booked about seventeen times. Um, Moore had a chance. Yeah, Grace, that's the one. More chance. He did not have a good game, and eh, this was kind of the first involvement I remember, but. That was like two hours ago now. But more, <laughs> he had a weird game. And then this chance, you're thinking, it's one of them games where he's been quiet, but he scores. But it didn't even look like it was going to go in. Never mind uh, never mind the line clearance from Silver, I think it was. No, I don't think it was uh, on target in the end. But it was a really good run, I have to say that. But it wasn't uh, a very, very good first touch from him. He didn't quite get out of his feet into the shape where he could run in and probably finish by opening his body up and putting it to to his own left side that's why he had to clip it across and probably that is something to do with not having had too much of the ball earlier on in the game but like I said Rudiger did shut him down in the one-on-ones he's very good at that he gets very close and is very aggressive so that was not unexpected and when we kept trying to play the diagonal balls it's really easy for Alonso to cut them out so we didn't have him involved in the counter-attack and outlets he was all right in the build-up play I thought Salah you know Mm. in terms of you know Combine him with Henderson and Trent and that, he was perfectly fine. No different to any other game, but it was those into the penalty box areas where we missed him, obviously. So he should have scored. You know, he still should have scored that. That's fair enough to say. But, you know, once in a while, you're not going to uh, have he a perfect human. ending. Yeah, he- yeah, he is. And obviously a, a game where if you're not hugely involved, then there can be 
little bits of it which are difficult to just turn up at the right moment. We've seen him do it often enough. It doesn't happen every single time, though. One thing I forgot to mention was our red card, obviously, which is probably going around on to other fan bases. Naby Keita, red card for you? I don't think so for me. No. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't. It was. It, it was a foul because he didn't get the first. But this isn't dangerous play. This is just because of where he's running in. He's not even. It's a collision, which is the boot is high, but it's not because it's the challenge is high. He hasn't gone for the ball there. That's just where his boot has ended up after they've both collided, and Chalaba's obviously spun him around, and his foot has gone higher up. That's that's not a red card, and nor was it a red card in the first half where Mason Mount knelt down into his arm about four foot off the ground. <laughs> yeah, his elbow where. He fouled Navi Kerr. Yes. <laughs> it, uh, it was a good one, though. It was a good one. Um, we're going to have to get into the disallowed goal now. Y- you mentioned it was a nonsense. I, I can understand why, but I, I just feel like Man United to get away with that. I'm sure I've seen them get away with something similar. Was it against Aston Villa in the Cup or something like that? Or, or got one disallowed for something stupid? But it just, like, I thought they meant to give the attacking team the advantage, and he is literally a toenail offside, if so. I mean, I look, the offside is offside, whatever. I don't mind about that so much. I mind the fact that they've called that as a uh, an intervention in play. He hasn't. He hasn't because he hasn't hampered Reese James getting to the ball. James is never reaching that. It's about six feet in front of him. Mm. Not if he got shot out of a cannon at that angle would he have reached that ball. There's no chance he was getting there. Other than that, the execution was perfect. It was... Really good delivery to the back post. And then you had runners go on the other side as well. And Sadio's done pretty well to get the header down. And as Dave said before his uh, untimely departure from us, we were deprived of another Joel Matip celebration. Really, could you imagine the limbs if Joel Matip got the winner? Oh, Dell. Am, am, am I right in thinking that this was Matip's, or it would have been Matip's second Wembley goal? Didn't he score in the uh, Community Shield for us one time as well? Am I making that up? It rings a bell, but Community Shield... I don't think would a community shield of, with Klopp. I don't think we have, have we? So I probably barred that from my memory. Versus City. Know. Yeah. People saying against Man City. So yeah. Right, Dell, if you're on if you are I don't even know if you have permissions. Dell, if you can unmute. There he is. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> yeah. There he is. Fucking did hell, you, finally. Did you just try and do a Steven Gerrard impression? Yeah, of course. Oh, God. <laughs> Fuck Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was so fucking nervous. Yeah, the quad's on. I told you guys well in advance. And the banter start of the, of the day has to be Ah, uh, Kepa Ari Blazan, though, whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah. yeah. Uh he played two minutes against Liverpool. He conceded eleven penalties and he missed one penalty. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, um, it was such a nervy game. Yeah, uh, you know, attention galore and all that sort of stuff. But bloody hell, man! Yeah, at least at least now we've got that one trophy out of the way. Three trophies now on the hunt: FA Cup, Champions League, Premier League. Um, it, it, the season isn't over, not by any long stretch of the imagination, and also. Yeah, uh, with Man United now, apparently they, yeah, so we've now tied them on 66 trophies apiece. So we've now officially become the big slob in England. So, haha, you man, you fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I just want to say. Uh, but, guys, yeah. Yeah, uh, I know, I know, I know it's one of the smallest trophies, but a trophy's trophy. A uh, big club like Liverpool, we need to, in it, you, you're here to win major honours, and the Cabo Cup is a major honour. Yeah, so let's enjoy this tonight. 
And then on Wednesday, smash your Norwich, go to the quarterfinals. Yeah, we're already in the quarterfinals of the, of the Champions League anyway. And the Premier League, you know what? Let's go. Go and go. And fuck it. You win the four trophies, become the first ever English team to win the quad. But yeah, yeah of course. That's it. Well, thank you, Del. It was very Delish. I'll go with that. <laughs> uh, Carl, I'm going to let you go because Stephen's here and I'm going to look and hopefully that his kid doesn't wake up and he has to go be a dad. But if not, thank you, Carl, if you're still here. Uh, thanks very much. Good stuff. Right, Stephen, I know you had to listen to um, to the second half, but yeah, you've probably... Well, we'll get to extra time because the second half, second half, it was it was dying a death. We had a, a couple more incidents. I mean, we had subs and stuff like that. Um, one of my notes is this ref is fucking dreadful, which is great. <laughs> um, yeah, we we had a couple chances. I I made a note of how the fuck, and I I think that's the big chance at the end of the game, and I, I think it's where it goes across the box and it just doesn't go in. But it, it goes to extra time, Stephen, and. Ha- you're obviously listening nervously, which probably makes it worse for you. I mean, how are you feeling at that time? <laughs> By extra time, I'd just managed to get the um, my internet back, and finally the, my router stopped blinking red, so I could actually I could actually watch it. And it was after that forty five minutes of listening to what was going on, getting to see the um, extra time was a lot more enjoyable, but. I kind of liked the fact I as soon as as soon as the get as soon as I, I think I got about a minute into the match and realised Canate was on, and he was just imperious again, wasn't he? He didn't mm. care. I know they had a couple of chances, but they, they, there was also a lot of Ebu just trying to play sixty yard through balls, which I adored watching, even though they didn't come off. Like, did I might be the only. I didn't know Timo Werner came on. Apparently it was when the VAR BS was happening with our goal. <laughs> it took me like 15 minutes to realise he came on. We obviously did a lot of subs. Uh, we did have a question on the midfield. I might just save that for scouting next week because I imagine... Saving... But yeah, we'll go into extra time, Stephen. You, you've got your internet back. We're all nervous as shit. I mean, our players looked a bit dead, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, they did look a bit running on empty, and I don't know. I don't know. Like Jota today, just he didn't feel me full of confidence, and normally he Look does. Empty. Like, yeah. yeah, like today, he he, you could tell he was coming up from injury, right? And I was pleased to see him on, but he, there were a couple of chances that fell to him. Fair enough, Chelsea had a lot of players in the box, and it was a bit like pinball, wasn't it, for a lot of our opportunities and extra time? But <clears throat> it did get quite. I know it was back and forth, but I kind of felt like penalties were coming in about the 95th, 96th minute. It just it had that feeling to it, didn't it? It just didn't feel like there was a sort of an actual goal coming. I know there was a couple of you know a couple more offsides and a lot of pinball action, but it just didn't feel like we were going to get a goal. Yeah, it was. A, it, it, we didn't even really have that threat on the count because Lewis. Uh, Louis Diaz, I can't remember the minute, but it looked like he hurt himself sta- either slipping on the ball or standing on the ball. I'm not sure if anything came on, came out about that. Uh, we will address that nervously at the start of next week. Um, but there was one wonderful moment when the smallest player on the pitch starts on a guy who's six foot three after having already shoved Kovacic. I mean, is- it's just wonderful and. One of my favourite things about Mascherano was he was tiny and had small man syndrome and did not give a fuck who you were. And Harvey's definitely got a bit about that game, hasn't he? It's <laughs> a great picture on Twitter of him literally fronting up to Havertz and Havertz is, what, seven, eight inches taller than him? Brilliant. He must be, yeah. Uh, it was, it uh, almost uh, makes up for Matic not scoring, seeing him being a feisty little fucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's very... He's always a feisty little bastard, to be fair to um, yeah, it, it was a it was a nervy game. I did miss some chances at the end of the night. I mean, Van Dijk's header saved by Mendy. I thought it was a better save at first, but yeah, when when you're in with the emotions, oh, fuck it up. It, it was a good save because I, I can't remember who it was, but we did have a player in the middle of the box, and has he if he gets it wrong, it's a tap in for 
<laughs> for the attacker, but he manages to push the ball well out of the way of any other players. So it, yeah. it was a good save. But at the same time, like Big Kev did not look like he was going to concede a goal at all. No, he, he made a good save on, uh, I think, 94 minutes with his feet. Trent just couldn't be asked. He couldn't be asked tracking Alonso for the extra inch. <laughs> but also, like Carl was saying before, wasn't he? With the Chelsea forwards, apart from Lukaku, you don't one on one. You don't expect them all to finish it the way you'd expect mm. Mane and Mo. But for us, is that because we've finally got two goalkeepers we trust? Like Adrian's in Absolutely. that case, and you never know what's going to happen. And you know, Rainer was a legend, but then fell off a cliff. We've had some god awful goalkeepers like James over the years, right? So it's the fact that we have a goalkeeper that fans mostly trust. We didn't expect them to score as well. It's the fact that those players aren't getting loads of goals. I don't know, but yeah, I just thought I just didn't feel like anyone was getting past him today. No, I'm kind of with you there because he has been really good in this competition as well. He's he's been excellent. I mean that the Leicester game. Uh, especially, I think he did. He have a couple saves against Arsenal as well. I might remember. Remember, maybe he's been really. I think he had good spells last year, but I think this tournament's almost been a coming to coming to wage uh, tournament for Kelleher. So it, it's great to see. He's almost announced himself as a ready-made Premier League goalkeeper. Mate, it's obviously for Liverpool. We've got Allison, but Kelleher is. He could be an option for many, many clubs, but. I think I think you said it earlier, Steve. I just hope he stays at Liverpool long because we took long enough to get one goalkeeper we trusted. Now we've got two. It, it, it's it's really good. And today it's the saves with his feet. He reminds me of. He does remind me of Ali the way he's getting those saves with his feet. You know, Schmeichel was a legend for it. He just makes himself big and spreads, and a part of his body gets on the ball, and he doesn't go for the hero save or the, you know, for the camera save. He just wants to stop the ball going in and. As I said, I think it's I think it's Havertz where he gets his left foot out, and mm. you know the commentary are banging on about Mendy again. It's an absolutely brilliant save, and you just get those. You know, we've had countless games where we've watched De Gea doing it to us, but today I really enjoyed the fact it felt like he was having that game. So when it went to penalties, it was nerve wracking. But as I said, you know, I had my two year old who doesn't can't say a lot, but he can now say, "Go on, Kev." Over and over and over again. Irish, you need to get the Irish in there. Uh, go on, Irish Kev. That's what you need. Um, so we'll go back into extra time. You mentioned Kanata coming on, a scary, talented player who will be our centre back for a very long time. Uh, I mentioned earlier when Gags was on Lukaku's goal, that was tight. That was a tight offside. That was too tight considering the way we play. Um, then they had another one which is a bit clearer offside, but. I mean, the main story for extra time, Stephen, is they sub on Kepa with a couple minutes left. Hey, what are you? What are you, what are you feeling then? I mean, after the whole Sarri thing, what was it? Three, four years ago. Yeah, it, it just kind of felt like this was going to end in tears. And as the penalties were coming and coming and coming, I was just sat there texting my mate, going, "Big Kev's going to win this." Like, but I didn't expect it to be. Keeper on keeper penalties. 11, 11 I know. But like, what an ultimate way for a keeper who is the cup keeper to win the fucking cup because he's playing against a guy who's been brought on to beat him. And not only does he beat him, he gets the winning penalty and Kepa just falls apart and does a Charlie Adam and the ball is still coming down. Like, what a brilliant penalty from Kev. Oh, what he did. No, his penalty was fantastic. I mean, it, it, almost by default, I think his may have to be my favourite. Although Fabinho did Penenka Kepa, which is kind of just dirt. It's absolute filth. Because Kepa was being a bell end and Fabinho sat him down, basically. But and Irish Kev doing doing that. I think we've we've seen we've seen keepers in the past who have come. I mean, De Gea, and I mentioned it jokingly, but the Europa League, De Gea's been a world class goalkeeper for many years and he, he crumbled when he has to take a penalty and our second choice goalkeeper up against their second choice goalkeeper, but their second choice goalkeeper is the most expensive goalkeeper in the history of football. And we've got this young lad from Ireland and I I think he said in the interview afterwards, it's more hit and hope. But he kept it in the bloody goal, whereas Kepper did a nice goal kick impression. 
it, it, it's really impressive from him. He, he may have got a hand on a few of them, but the quality of that penalty shootout was astonishing. For him to score and for Kepper to crumble, it, it really is. It really is special from him. Yeah, and look, he looked nervous. I mean, um, someone mentioned before that Robbo looked nervous, but he, he did look nervous. But I guess when in training you're having to take pens against Ali on what, probably a pretty regular basis, he just had the mm-hmm. composure to just smash it in. And he looked like he knew what he wanted to do and he went for as hard as, as, hard as you like and it was a good penalty. It really was. It really was. But that's pretty much the end of the game. I mean, we've lifted we've lifted the trophy, Stephen. We, we've won. We won the League Cup. Like, obviously it's kind of a run that Klopp doesn't take. I'm serious. He does doing the pre-match press conference and stuff like that. But it's such a nice moment. Like, it... Like, 06 final, I know it's the FA Cup. That's one of my favourite childhood memories. 2012 was such a nice moment, considering how crap we were at the time. It This cup is just really nice when you win it. I mean, I think that's the ultimate saying. When you lose it, nobody gives a shit. But when you win it, it's really fun. And that was. that was It was a horrid game. But now we'll look back at that game as fun rather than tense and horrid. I mean, watching Klopp lift the trophy, he was pretty much laughing right and he's fist pumping and he was hanging that, <laughs> and he was hanging it right over the edge of the balcony and he looked like he really enjoyed it as you said it's definitely a trophy where you feel great when you win it but you don't care too much when you don't but the great thing about winning it is the way we're going he could be at the end of the season saying up your hoop to every other manager because he's put up or quadruple and you've got to win this one first to do it I like it. I like it. Next up for grabs, well, depends how the Premier League goes, but we've got the FA Cup in midweek. I'm not sure what day exactly. Hopefully we get through that. We've got to stay on track in the Premier League. I think it's West Ham next up. So the the tough matches continue, but I mean, what a... Let, well, before we go, I mean, what a final that was. It's the best nil-nil game I've ever seen. It was mental. But normally when for as a neutral because we've not been in many d- domestic cup finals since his first year but as a neutral that game must have been brilliant i i was sat on the edge of my seat punching the wall swearing telling my dad to f off it's just oh i i feel great that we've won this i mean there were 21 goals there was end to end actions there were some wonderful tackles there was Kate, I think, in his canto, just before he goes off, is the smallest player on the pitch starting a fight. Mm. You know, it, it had everything from a final. Just the goals happened to not be when you want them, but there were still 21 goals we got to watch and some absolutely belting penalties. Like, calm as you like from Trent and oh, Trent Virgil. Was His was lovely. Virgil's was lovely. They were all brilliant penalties. Just Divi's had the charm of... He just don't give a shit, and I really like that. I really enjoyed, <laughs> really enjoyed that. But it was a, it was a great game. I was a bit gutted that I didn't get to go. A few of the lads from work were there, so. Um, but it does mean I get to talk to you, guy. And what? A, yeah, what? A, what a fucking brilliant game! And as, exactly. as, as we were chatting before, I started supporting Liverpool in the nineties and watched a lot of League Cup finals. So it was quite funny having to put up with Five Live for some of the match because. It's, it's, it's a throwback. It's a throwback. It was a throwback, having to fight my sisters for the TV and put the radio on until <laughs> t- until I won the battle and all of that. So I don't know. I think we were chatting on WhatsApp, weren't we, in the group before. It just felt like this was the right. We we, we had to win this. It just felt like this was going to be our trophy, and we got it. And what a win! Absolutely, what a win! Hopefully, the first of four, as you say. But that is it. I think we've done over an hour. It's been a bit chaotic with people jumping in and out. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thank you everyone who's listened live in Discord. It's It's been fun. I will have to get permission sorted with gags and stuff, so it's a bit cleaner next time. Um, but thank you everyone. We have won at first of the quadruple question mark. Goodbye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, 
where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.